Hello everybody, welcome back to more Banjo-Tooie. We are now done with all except one of the worlds uh, right now. We cleared Hail Hailfire Peaks last time. That's the same Hail Hailfire Peaks. Sorry, I get tongue-tied at times. Yep, we are seven worlds down. There's only one full world left of the game. There's also the final world, but that's much smaller and doesn't have any jiggies in it, so it doesn't really count. So, before we go off to the new world, there are a few things that we have to do. The first is we can get a new Cheeto page, because we got six Cheeto pages. Great, you've got enough pages for me to tell you a new secret cheat. About time, spill the beans! Hand over my precious pages first. Much obliged. My fourth cheat is Honey Back. Got it? Well, that's all the cheats I can give you for now. If you find any more pages, you know where to find me. This is a menu of the codes I have told you. So we have a new one, Honey Back. And out of all of the cheats that you can get in this game, that Cheeto himself actually gives you, that one is the most busted by a mile. Like, if you thought Fall Proof was really p broken and really powerful, oh, you've seen nothing yet. Honeyback just literally trivializes the rest of the game. Naturally, it's the one code that I'm actually not going to turn on, but I'm still going to show off what it does, and I'm still going to actually input it in the Maya Hem Temple code chamber, so I'll see you guys there. All right. The code was Honeyback. So... H-O-N-E-Y, and then, where's the B? B-A-C-K. The honey back cheat will automatically replenish your energy over time. Yeah, you heard that right. The honey back cheat will literally just solely refill our HP. So, to demonstrate, I'll let the Magi hit me. And if we go to our wall of cheats, if we turn on the automatic energy, Boom, it gives us the energy back. I mean, you can argue it is a bit slow, like it's usually one energy back every five seconds. I don't consider that slow. That's really fast. It basically makes you invincible. So we are not equipping that. That is a little too broken. <laughs> and by a little, I mean a lot. It would literally trivialize the entire rest of the game. No boss battle would pose any sort of threat to us. Now, I'll be honest, I did end up using that cheat for the final boss on my first playthrough, because boy howdy, the final boss of this game is really, really tough. But with that cheat, it makes it an absolute keg walk, so we're not equipping that. We're gonna have a real challenge in this game. We're not gonna rely on baby, on baby cheats. I have no problem with doubling my feathers and eggs. Or removing fall damage, because you're going to remove fall damage with the ground pound anyways. And it basically just makes exploration a little easier. But that just trivializes the difficulty of the boss battles. Anyhow, now that we're in the Wooded Hollow, we're going to go ahead and open up World 8. And World 8 is a very, very strange world. You might be wondering what on earth it is. Well, good question. Let's take a peek at Jiggy Wiggy's challenge. So at first glance, it looks like it's another icy-themed world, because you've got this ice on the ground. It's actually not, but... Well... No, put it here. No, put it... Thank you. That is not even close to where I said to put it. <laughs> These puzzles are getting a bit on, on the annoying side now. They're still easy enough because we get plenty of time to solve them. As you can see though, this is a very strange looking world. Put it there for crying out loud. This would be the hardest part of the game to speedrun, honestly. The hitboxes on the pieces are so messed up. Actually, we're kind of running out of time a little bit. We have 30 seconds left. You have completed Jiggy Wiggy's Challenge 8, so now the Great One will show you the way. 
So it looks like kind of like the Crystal Caves from Donkey Kong 64, like an ice cavern. That's not it at all. But we're about to see it. You're also probably wondering where the entrance to the world is. Behold the power of the mighty Jiggy Wiggy. So back to the wasteland. Remember where we entered Pterodactyland from? Do you guys remember this little strange hallway we went through? And this mysterious purple crater? It makes a bubble there. You are probably wondering what the heck that world is. Well, I'm still trying to figure that out myself. You are indeed the chosen one. You also have enough Jiggies to attempt Jiggy Wiggy's challenge number nine. So at this point, we can open up the next world. I don't think we can open up the final boss because there are two more challenges left. One to open up the final world and then there's another to open up the final boss. I think you need 70 Jiggies in order to open the final boss, so we'll wait for that. Also, it occurred to me that uh, last time, one of the previous episodes, I activated the Get Jiggy code, and I never showed off what it did. It says it activates the signposts in here, so if you remember, we went to these signposts and they're like, Oh, like, the secrets will be revealed later! Well, if we read them now... Behold the Jiggy secrets of Mayahem Temple. 1. Defeat Target Zan. 2. Inside Target Zan's Temple. 3. Top of Target Zan's Temple. 4. Recover Target Zan's Stolen Gold. 5. Win the Kickball Games. 6. Kill the Plague of Flies. 7. Quicksand Area in Jade Snake Grove. 8. Sleeping Jade Snake. 9. Quicksand Area in Prison Compound. 10. Stone Columns in Prison Compound. There are eight signs in here, one for each world. It'll tell you where all of the Jiggies are. So if you're stumped trying to find out where some of the Jiggies lie, well, you can use those signposts to help you. However, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> all right, new world to explore. But before we go there, one place I've neglected to visit for a while is Honeybee's Hive. I, we definitely have enough Hollow Honeycomb pieces to get another health extension. I think we have 11 Hollow Honeycomb pieces now. I believe we only have two extensions left to get, and the final one we need every Hollow Honeycomb piece, but I'm pretty sure we could have gotten an extra bit of life for Hailfire Peaks if we wanted to, so it's kind of a shame that we didn't, but we'll see. We have 13 Hollow Honeycomb pieces. I'm Honeybee. I'll trade you extra energy units in return for empty honeycombs. You have enough honeycombs for one extra energy unit. Do you want to trade? Do you want to trade? Yes. Sure, honey. Toss your honeycombs over here then, big bear. Why is this bee so big? Here's your extra energy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We could have gotten... Actually, I think we could have gotten that before Grunty Industries. <laughs> Whoops! Alright, it's been a while. Anyhow, off to World 8. Now, World 8 is a very... unique world. There's no other world quite like it, and I it's hard to describe. But I will say this, as I hinted at in previous uh, episodes, both Grunty Industries and Hailfire Peaks are quite a bit more difficult than this world. This world is a noticeable decline in difficulty overall. It still is home to probably the hardest Jiggy to get in the entire game, but the world as a whole is much easier to navigate than the other last two worlds. And just like how the final world in Banjo-Kazooie, Click Clock Wood had my favorite overworld variation, same with the f uh, same with this game. I adore this version of the Isle of Hags. Cue here to ride in the great bubble elevator up to the clouds! Yes. We're going to the Sky World. But this Sky World is much different than any other Sky World you've seen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to World 8, Cloud Cuckoo Land. Take a look. Doesn't look like your average Cloud World now, does it? 
giant mountain in the middle of nowhere. There's a giant trash can on a floating island. Giant lump of cheese over there. Yeah, this world is absolutely bonkers. There's no real one theme other than that it's high up in the sky. Other than that, it's just a mishmash jigsaw puzzle of a bunch of random stuff. And it actually is kind of awesome. Here's a warp pad, and hey there, bro. Fancy a little physical exercise for a ball? Not really. Yes, you do, Banjo! Right, I'm Mr. Fit, and I'm really fit. I am so fit, in fact, that if you can beat me in three events, I'll give you my fitness gold medal. That's nice. It is, actually. As you can probably see, event one is the high jump. The bar is set at my best height. All you need to do is jump over it to win. Somebody's using flubber. <laughs> There's no way an anteater can jump that high. Hup. Oh wait, no, I wasn't really trying here. I bet we could get over that with a high jump. Uh, nope. Come on, furball, let's see you jump over that bar. I can't. You rigged it. That that there's no way you jumped that high. Yeah, this world is basically... It breaks a lot of the conventional platforming rules, as we're gonna see eventually. So we can enter these flowers, and it'll launch us from one area to the next. It's like Mario Galaxy bef way before Mario Galaxy ever existed. There are these slightly miscolored tiles here. We can build, drill them open. Another thing you can do is you can actually grenade egg them open as well. I thought you could grenade egg them open. Or maybe it was Clockwork Kazooie eggs? I thought for sure there was some way to get these open with explosives. Never mind, I lied. Just build, drill them open. What the heck is that? I found a strange looking seed. Is it edible? <laughs> that looked more like somebody's heart to me. But okay then, we got a seed, I suppose. Yeah, Cloud Cuckoo Land is definitely um, a unique world. <laughs> As you can see, Mumbo's skull is over there, and it's blue now. It's just there's a lot of stuff in this world that's very different from the other worlds. And, like, Mumbo's hut being a different color is just the beginning. Oh boy, springy step shoes. The boing! Actually, hey, maybe we can cheat Mr. Fitz Olympus... Olympic high jump. If we enter the flower, it'll actually launch us back there. But we'll still have the springy step shoes. Aw, yeah. I mean, Mr. Fit almost certainly used Flubber himself to get that high, so... This really isn't cheating. <laughs> How did you do that? Oh, never mind. We'll move on to event two when you find me. Later, Mr. Fit. Oh, hey. A sack race, huh? Okay. I can do a sack race. Yeah, there are just a lot of things about this world that are just extremely different from the other worlds. For one, there are only two warp pads in this entire world. Other worlds have five, this world only has two, which is kind of amazing. However, despite what you might think, it's still very easy to navigate this world compared to the last two. Grunty Industries was just utterly massive and had multiple floors, and Hailfire Peaks had lava everywhere. This world is much easier to get through. This is like a gelatin heart, I think? Looks like there's stuff down there, but we can't actually do anything with that. <laughs> nice to see the Mario Galaxy gimmicks getting used way back in the N64 era. Boing! That's a living flower. He's easy to get rid of. And here's Wumpa's Wigwam. And another bouncy flower over there. But we don't have a Globo for her. You hiding the Globo in here, Humba? I keep calling her Wumba. Her first name is actually Humba. Wumba is her last name. Nope, no Globo here.
And if we go up here, look who it is. Hey, Banjo, it's that crazy canary woman again. That's me! Now how about another race? But the handcart's still down in the mine. Don't worry, you can use this clockwork mouse I found instead. Clockwork mouse? Are you mad? Oh yes! Go on, jump on board and press A as fast as you can to power the mouse along. Yeah, everyone's least favorite NPC from Glitter Gulch Mine is now here in Cloud Cuckoo Land. Although, if you haven't freed her from Glitter Gulch Mine, or if you haven't beaten both of her races in Glitter Gulch Mine, she will not be here in Cloud Cuckoo Land, and this clockwork mouse here will be rusted up and broken. So that's interesting. So if we want, we can hop in the mouse and try to race her again. Remember how I said in Glitter Gulch Mine that she was like everyone's most hated NPC in uh, Banjo-Kazooie, or at least one of them? It's not because of the races in Glitter Gulch Mine. Those are really easy, but the races in Cloud Cuckoo Land are sadistically difficult. I'm actually not sure if I'll be able to do it. I mentioned I have never gotten 100% in this game. I have never been able to beat this race. So you, again, you can race her twice. The first is for a Jiggy and the second is for a Cheeto Page. The first race I was not able to beat, but I was able to help get my older brother to beat it for me. Second race, no. Neither of us could beat it. And my older brother was ridiculously good at mashing the A button, so... Yeah, I'm actually not sure if I'll be physically capable of getting the Cheeto Page! And we fall down towards Hellfire Peaks. One cool thing about this world is that you can see the ILO hags from above. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool how you can see the ILO hags down below. It's an interesting shape and you can see like Hellfire Peaks and all the different worlds. It's really cool. Well... Yeah, I'm not going to be attempting Canary Mary's race just yet. I'm going to need to psych myself up for that. Let's go inside here. This is the main area of the level. This is the Central Cavern. This is what we saw in the Jiggy Wiggy Challenge preview. And hey, there's a Jam Jars silo there. There's only one Jam Jars move on this level. And unfortunately, we can't actually go in there. It's too small. Yeah, in case you couldn't tell, that's a move for Banjo only. These guys are weird enemies. They're like 2D cardboard cutouts of monsters who can wield candy canes, flowers, or hot dogs. Very easy to deal with, but... Very, this is just such a bizarre level. Start to finish. I could get the note and leave through that area over there, but I'm not gonna... The central cavern is very weird and kind of weird to navigate through. But if we go to the center here, we can get the one other warp pad in the level. So we can warp between the entry and exit, and we can warp between the central cavern, and that's it. So there are a lot of different entrances here. There's one thing in particular I'm looking for. There it is. Down this way. These guys are so weird. Greetings, fleshy ones! Wow, a talking safe! Correct, I am a Super Stash Deluxe, four digit infinite combination reinforced strongbox. But four digits only gives you 10,000 combinations! Hey, no one likes a wise guy. It's enough up here. Oh, well, let's have a look inside then. Oh, that might be a problem. I seem to have forgotten my own combination. Perhaps they should have spent a little more on your intel intelligence chip. I know. Sorry, fleshy ones. But if you can find the combination, I'll gladly open up. Yeah, so this is one of the main quests of the world, is trying to find his combination to open him up. And finding it is very strange, because there are four different switches on the level that we have to blow up in order to find this combination. It is extremely strange. 